Hi everyone, this is Neil Wright, it's here, consultant, audiologist and director of Clearwax. Thank you for joining me in another demonstration video of our recently developed wax scope, which is due to be launched very shortly indeed. If you are interested in the wax scope and you want to register your interest, please do email info at clearwax.co.uk and we shall add you to our mailing list. So we have here a patient who attended with bilateral fully occluding uh, matted, sticky earwax and dead skin, as you can see. I'm using our standard um, specular size, which is a size two, um, which has an internal diameter of 4.25 millimeter. So it's in uh, keeping with the normal speculae that most audiologists use to examine the ear, for at least for uh, adult patients. We have got a smaller size specular as well for more narrower pediatric ears and that's got an internal diameter 3.5 millimeter. And all of our speculae, uh, there's two larger sizes, a five millimeter and a 5.75 millimeter. Uh, all of our speculae, they have a flared uh, proximal end, so you, it stops you from over inserting it into the ear. And we have an opening at the top, uh, which assists with the insertion of the instrument. Um, so I've managed to remove the more lateral wax and dead skin here so we're now uh, more halfway into the ear canal i'm just readjusting the focus and this wax is really really impacted i had to use an ear hook in the end to remove the final section of the wax so you will see that and in fact their right ear was even more blocked so we're in the the last third of the ear canal now so again i'm just adjusting the focus and there's two ways you can use the wax scope. You can have the focus set to a set level, and then um, you can either go further in to, uh, to, to get more focus with the deeper wax, and uh, vice versa, if there's wax near the entrance, you can just come away with the wax scope. Um, so it's a fixed focus. Or, you, which is what I prefer, is to fully insert the, the speculae to straighten and dilate the ear canal, and then just with my finger uh, on the app, I can adjust the focus if need be. We are also working on autofocus feature where you can um, tap the screen and it should focus on the object that um, has been identified um, when, when you tap, but um, we'll see how that goes. Um, and again, you can adjust the exposure so if you want more brightness, again, all with a single swipe of the um, your finger on the app. I don't really feel the need to do that much with the wax scope, truth be told. So once you've got the exposure set, it shouldn't really need to be uh, adjusted. So this is the more this is the more medial wax. This is the bit that's really impacted against the patient's eardrum. It's lodged beyond the isthmus, so the isthmus is a narrowing. There's two isthmuses within the ear actually. There's one in between the first and second bend of the ear canal. That's the narrowest portion of the ear. So that's on the outer lateral third. And then you've got an isthmus, a narrowing, about half a centimetre away from the eardrum. So the ear canal narrows and it widens. And this wax has been pushed beyond that narrowing, so it's lodged in the wider section. So we have to retrieve this, pull this through. And it's, of course, because it's, the wax plug is larger than the, the isthmus of the ear canal, it's uh, it's trapped there, so we have to really leverage this forward. So I've managed to bring it slightly forwards. Um, and this wax plug, you can see, it's almost like a bird's nest. There's a lot of hair in there. And I think at this stage, I've brought it just to the second bend. On the left-hand side, you'll see a bit of cartilage, a bit of flesh. That's the second bend, so probably a centimetre away from the entrance of the ear. And it's not going to come any further than that, so... Uh, in a moment, I'm pretty sure I'm going to use a hook. And this is uh, one of the advantages of the, the wax scope. You're not just limited to microsuction. You can use all instruments. In fact, we've developed or are in the process of developing our own range of instruments, which it's not only um, more efficient and um, easier to use with the wax scope, but even if you're performing ear wax, we were using different visualisation techniques. What we've developed, hopefully, is going to help you um, regardless of which in, uh, visualization method you're using, whether it's an ENT microscope, head loops, the wax scope, um, or the endoscope. So that should be launched in the next couple of months. So it managed to extract that using the ear hook, um, just now visualizing the eardrum, just getting it in focus. You can see there's a bit of tympanosclerosis anteriorly. There's just a bit of a thinning of the eardrum there. So I've just zoomed in just to make sure there's no perforation. 
again I'm just adjusting the focus just to get a really good visual here you can see all the uh, blood vessels capillaries uh, around the, uh, the hammer bone and again I'm just going back in again I think I'm going to zoom in as well so that's one of the, the additional features we're de developing with our own app there's a zoom feature there as you can see uh, I'm going to use it in this right here, the zoom, to remove some more deeper wax. So do do stay tuned for that. So again, I'm just dilating the ick now. Um, I have, as I said, we have got full sizes. I think for me, I'm probably going to be using more often than not the 4.25, which is what I'm using here. This is going to be my go-to. And then if there's a narrower ear, I'll revert to the 3.5. Um, the 5 and the 5.75, um, they're more for your more larger ear canals, you probably won't see them as often. Because um, most people with earwax do um, have narrow, twisty ear canals. That's one of the, the causes. Um, so, or if you've got some of the mastoid cavity, um, so the 5.75 would be great for that. But we've got all the options there. Um, when I first started developing the Speculi, um, did a bit of market research, because I used to perform earwax removal before using an endoscope, using a Speculi. Uh, when I used to use a microscope or head loops. Um, but I just wanted to get some feedback of the uh, people who do it day in, day out in terms of the, the most common speculative size they use. And the answer we got back was five millimeters. But the more I've been performing the procedure with a speculi, I actually prefer um, the smaller size. Uh, and it doesn't really impact on the view. So again, I've just zoomed in here at the roof of the ear canal. So I'm inserting the hook there, but the hook just dissected through the wax plug. It didn't retrieve it. So I've just put some olive oil spray in there just to change the consistency. Going to get it in focus, as you can see. And then it's just helped loosen this wax a bit. Ironically, although the right side probably took a bit longer to remove than the left, but the patient felt the left ear was the worst out of the two in terms of their symptoms. And you can just see the, the magnification we can get with the wax scope. That's where I feel the wax scope really differs from your traditional head loops. Um, with the, when I used to use head loops and they were good quality ones, uh, the magnification just wasn't there. Uh, and also um, it's very difficult to see deep in the ear with, with precision and clarity. So if you're moving wax from the outer third of the ear canal, or even outer half, loops, I, f I, could, I could, I felt okay using them. But a lot of people with earwax come with impacted earwax. It's beyond that second bed and it's deeper in the ear. And I just didn't feel comfortable using the loops. And in a way, that's what's inspired the development of the eye clear scope and subsequently the wax scope. So um, it gave me that perspective um, of the limitations in terms of ear care um, that loops, in my opinion at least, provide. So you, you can just see how clear this image is as well with the wax scope. Um, it's slightly different to the endoscope. With an endoscope, you don't really have to adjust the focus because the tip of the endoscope is inside the ear. It's hence the name endoscope. It's inside uh, a, a, a bodily opening, a cavity. Um, with the wax scope, it's more like an ENT microscope. We can call it another name, potentially we can give it, it's called an exoscope. Um, so exo, so the camera is actually outside of the ear, which then means the focus is a bit more, um, you have to adjust the focus um, unless you're going forward and backwards with the speculi in the ear. Uh, as I said, I prefer just getting the speculi in position so it's in place, everything's secure, and then you adjust the focus. And that's the same with the uh, microscope. The microscope, you have to go forwards and backwards with the microscope, with your head loops, forwards and backwards with your head. With this, you don't really have to do that. Uh, so I think ergonomically, this provides a lot more benefits than using head loops in a microscope because you, you're in a fixed position um, and you just have to change the focus with your finger. So you're not having to go forwards and backwards. And also when patients slightly move as well, with when you're you guys using loops microscope, you're having to then readjust yourself um, to regain focus and position. And also with the um, head loops microscope, when you're visualizing different parts of the ear, you're having to reposition your head 
or the patient's head with this. You're just moving your wrist to move the position of the specular within the ear. So again, I just used the zoom feature there to remove some wax that was close to the anterior canal wall near the eardrum. Got a good visualization of the eardrum here. Uh, there's, there's no tympanous growth, there's no scar tissue, there's no opaqueness like there was in the left, left ear. So you can see the blood vessels there, just zooming in, getting it in focus. See, and you're gonna see some still images in a moment. So that's the wax from both ears and the large plug there, you're gonna see a, a zoomed in um, image of that in a moment. That's from the patient's left ear when I extracted it using a oh, so sizable chunk. Just see how dark it is, it's oxidized, it's been there for a while. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. And if you are interested in the Waxgate, please do email info at clearwax.co.uk. Thank you, bye.